Hey everybody, how's it going? Just a quick uh, vlog type video here. I don't really have anything uh, all that important. I don't know about you, but uh, lately I haven't really uh, had a whole lot of uh, incentive or energy to be doing. You know, I haven't been writing really anything, so I hadn't really been recording much anything. I've been playing a little bit, but that's just about it. So I just kind of figured I'd just kind of fire up a camera here. So I'm on my cell phone today, and uh, it's really hard not to look at the display instead of the lens. Uh, <laughs> You ever see videos where somebody's <laughs> doing the entire, like addressing their their audience looking off to the side the whole time. So I think that the lens is right here, is that it? Yep, that's the lens, all right. So I'm using my cell phone because my cameras are um, otherwise indisposed right now. So um, one thing that I did, I don't know, I'm kind of proud of this, I, I really like this. One thing that I've always wanted, just always wanted, and that I've heard about and uh, never really done it myself, but to have like a, a mic locker. I've seen a couple of kind of, you know, really cool kind of displays, display cases for uh, microphones. And, oh man, I don't see a way on my phone here. Oh man, I can't flip around away from selfie cam while I'm filming. All right, uh, one moment, let me get this flipped around. Okay, there we go, not in selfie mode anymore. So, I always wanted a mic locker, and so we ended up uh, buying this thing from Ikea. And it's just like a, just kind of a pretty cheap metal thing with glass sides on it. But it was a way that I could actually, you know, display my microphones. So let's open this fella up. It needs some lighting in here to kind of set it off. It's got a couple of holes up here um, where you can fit little light cords through, but uh, no light in here yet. But I just thought this was just a, a really kind of impressive looking way to kind of have my mics where, hey, yeah, I can I can admire them, I can enjoy them. And I wanted to leave my camera set up over here too, because I think that looks kind of cool too. So that's why I'm using a cell phone today. And then there's just kind of like the, the equivalent of a junk drawer down at the bottom. I'm not sure what to do with that bottom section down there. If you got any ideas, let me know. But I just thought this looks just cool, you know? <laughs> and especially if you get some, some top lighting to really kind of set it off. But I've got the, the Aventone CV12 in here. I've got the Lewitt LCT440 Pure. I got the pair of uh, AKG C414 XLS. Just kind of all looking sharp on the, on the top shelf. I've got a pair of Sennheiser MD 421s. I've got a pair of uh, old Shure SM81s. I have a pair of the Cascade Fatheads. And then like my dynamic mics down here. A couple of Shure SM57s. Audix i5, Audix D6, and then my cameras. If anybody cares, that's a Panasonic uh, Lumix GH5, uh, Panasonic Lumix G85, and then my little Canon uh, PowerShot G, what was it, G7X, GX7, G7X, I think. And then a couple of lenses. That's the uh, Vario 12 to 35 millimeter that I got with the uh, GH5. And then that's like the little kit. I think it's like a 12 through 60 or something kit lens for the G85. But I think it all just kind of looks kind of cool, especially, I don't, man, this camera is really <laughs> not a very wide angle. I got to back up to the other side of the room here to see the whole thing. But um, yeah, I think that's going to look great with some lighting in it. It's just one of those things. I don't know. I'm kind of uh, kind of proud of it because I've just I've always wanted kind of a, a mic locker, and uh, you know it's got little little locks here so you can you can actually lock it top and bottom, and then this door will lock to that. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, nifty. So I just kind of rearranged some stuff, to, you know, nothing interesting or anything. Scooted my little rolly carts over and, and uh, this is what was uh, sitting right there where the mic locker is now. And <laughs> this is, was, this still just looks trashy. There's just no good way I found to have kind of a battery charging station. You know, this is just where all of my uh, rechargeable batteries for lights and cameras and my lavalier and all that stuff. Um, and then my power supply for that Aventone is on there. I just haven't found like a clean way to do this because, you know, all the battery chargers and everything, they're all different shapes and sizes and different plugs and everything. They, they're they going to need, you know, some sort of a power strip. And I don't know. I don't know. Any any of y'all in your own home studio have kind of a 
tidy looking battery charging station? If so, let me know. Let us see some pictures or something. And uh, not a whole lot else has changed. I have been working on getting a little bit of uh, storage. Uh, these are Ikea, these little cube boxes things. I can't remember what they're called, uh, but they're handy, you know, just to get up off the floor and uh, have kind of a nice little cubby to stash some stuff. I got all my uh, back issues of uh, tape off here. I just got the email today. The latest issue is on its way. I'm looking forward to that. A bunch of manuals and stuff that I won't have to fish around to find anymore. I don't know, other just kind of random, etc. I hadn't really found a good use for these other cubbies yet. And this one over here, this has kind of become my drum cubby uh, all in all. And uh, so the last things that I had posted on the channel were, were all those videos in the series about, uh, you know, recording drums. And I do have to say, you know, just a huge thank you to everybody that helped. I did, po I did film and edit uh, an epilogue to that. And I just never uploaded it because I don't know, it was not a very interesting 15 minutes. So I tell you what, why don't I cut in with uh, a few minutes of that and we'll kind of go over, you know, some of the things that I changed, you know, based on your suggestions and everything. All right. Uh, so let's do that here real quick and I'll see you in just a minute. Let's uh, head over to the drum kit here and uh, take a quick look. So the first and most important thing here, I did get all new drum heads. You know, I had never actually bought an entire set of drum heads before. I just, I'd bought top heads for a few of these, but it was, uh, you know, close to $200 to buy <laughs> top and, you know, batter and resonant heads for uh, five pieces here. So um, that, that, that kind of hurt a little bit, but hey, it's worth it. So what I ended up with here, so on the snare, I ended up with the uh, Evans Genera Dry. So it's a 10 mil single ply and uh, coated and it's got like a tone control ring uh, underneath. And then for whatever reason, it's got holes in it because I guess I just needed holes in my snare drum head. Um, but I, I do actually like the way this thing sounds quite a bit. I will have to say uh, that thing obliterated just about any kind of overtone coming out of the drum. Now it's just a pure crack and there is hardly any overtone in there. Just a little teeny tiny bit. It may be even a little too dry, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm, I am sure happy with it so far. I'm gonna put it through its paces, see how I like it over the long term. Matter of fact, and I didn't uh, mention this in the last video, but I have a, uh, a Ludwig uh, Black Galaxy Ultra, uh, Ultra Light, Acrolyte. <laughs> and I honestly don't use it much because it is so, intensely ringy and full of overtones that uh, it, it's a tough beast to tame. But my goodness, when it sounds good, it sounds great. And I think that this uh, dry, this genera dry head is probably going to be a very good fit for that acrylite. It might be just a little too much for this uh, wooden snare, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give one of those a try on the acrylite and see how it goes. Now on the underside of the snare, I ended up with an Evans, uh, what do they call it? Snare side 300, I think. Single ply three mil clear, or maybe hazy. I'm not exactly sure. And I stuck a um, set of 20 wire pure sound snares on there as well. So all good upgrades, I think. Um, I, I'm really liking the way the snare is sounding right now. On the toms, I decided to stick with the uh, Evans G2. Uh, so those are two ply coated. Uh, on the batter head. I really did like the way those, uh, you know, just something about the attack, something about it. I, I don't know. I, I really do like it. On the resonant side, I ended up with an Evans G1 clear. So that's like a single ply 10 mil on the resonant of all three toms. And when I went shopping on Sweetwater, uh, the pickings for Evans 20 inch kick heads, it was all that EMAD and Greg had kind of warned me that while they sound pretty good at first, that those uh, tone control rings kind of start to break down after a while. So I did steer clear of those. And I ended up with a, it's a Remo Power Stroke. So it's a two ply coated batter head. And I'll be darned, I, I have already worn a hole through the coating uh, <laughs> where the, the felt beater strikes that there. But I really do like that. And uh, on the Rezo side, I ended up with a, a Remo 
Power Stroke uh, P3 Ebony. And I did get the one with the porthole, because when it comes down to it, I, I do like the option of miking inside the drum. But that, that thing was ridiculously expensive. I think that head in and of itself was like 50 bucks. I, my excuse my you know just being incredulous about the the cost of uh, kick drum heads but obviously i've never bought kick drum heads before and uh i was in for quite a sticker shock when i started looking around but it's just about all i could find at sweetwater uh for a 20 inch kick with the porthole so yeah that's what i ended up with i like it I'm not sure if I like it $50 worth, <laughs> but knowing that I'll probably never have to replace it in my lifetime, eh, I can I can live with it. One time investment, I guess. Oh yeah, and I you can see I did uh, reinstate the 10 inch tom, uh, which was not my favorite uh, drum to say the least. But now that I've got it tuned, new heads on it and everything, um, I I actually kind of like it now. What I ended up doing was going to the a website for the TuneBot. They have an entire chart of, you know, you, you got this size of a drum. Uh, if you tune the batter head to this pitch and the resonant head to this pitch, you're going to end up with an open fundamental of this pitch. And so I broke out a uh, sine wave generator and reaper and sat with each drum and just spent hours and hours trying to tune each lug against a sine wave pitch. Uh, I it, I did make progress. It did come out better than I could do it just purely by ear, but it still left a lot to be desired. So uh, I'm a little kind of a ashamed to admit this, but I bought a TuneBot. <laughs> so the TuneBot is is to drums what a guitar tuner is to a guitar. This is the uh, TuneBot Studio, and I might actually I, I don't know if I'll do like an actual review on this thing, but I have to say. I'm pretty darn impressed by it. I'm I'm very happy with it. It does exactly what it says it's gonna do. Oh yeah, and uh, oh shoot, I forgot to even mention it. Right now I'm using an XY overhead. Uh, so I'm still using the C414s. And I was gonna try the ORTF, but I'm, I, I gotta be honest, I'm a little hesitant to try ORTF because I think it's gonna be too wide of a stereo. The way the mics are positioned, since they're kind of facing away from each other, there's not a whole lot of overlap in their uh, polar patterns when it comes to something that should be in the center, like the kick and the snare. So less kick and less snare in the overhead's probably not a bad thing, you know, now that I think about it. So I, I will try ORTF, but not today. So for right now, I'm using an XY pair, uh, using just one stand, and you can already kind of tell between now and the last uh, series of videos how much more, well, you know, you ignore the light stand over here, how much more of a walkway I have over here, <laughs> because I, I seriously, I had to just shimmy between the, the acoustic screen over here and, um, and the mic stands. All right, so yeah, I'll just spare you all the rest of the, uh, you know, 15 or 20 minute video there, but I, I do really want to just give a, a true heartfelt thank you to everybody that uh, kind of chimed in and gave some advice, and uh, I really do think that uh, I'm, I'm in a better spot now than I was before making that video series, and that is largely thanks to you all, so thank you very much. So yeah, not a whole lot else going on. Um, I did actually order from Sweetwater just the other day. Uh, of course, it's on back order. I ordered an SSL 2 Plus. So I'm wanting to do a video review of that. I think that'll be a lot of fun. The uh, Motu M4 was, you know, just a really successful video, you know, in terms of my channel. So I think the SSL 2 Plus being, you know, just another uh, hugely uh, popular interface right now amongst uh, home recording enthusiasts. I'll be really interested to uh, put that thing through its paces and just kind of see how it works and how it sounds. I think that'll be great. All right, I don't have anything else to talk about. And uh, I guess I could just sit here and stare at the camera for a few more minutes. But uh, instead of doing that, I'll call it quits here. Uh, hopefully we'll be back with some uh, real content here um, within the next week or two. Got a couple of ideas in mind of things to do. So uh, I just gotta gather the energy and uh, time to actually do it. So thank you all for watching. Uh, a, a big shout out and hello to all the newcomers. I, there's been a whole huge influx of new uh, subscribers to the channel and everything. So hello, everybody. Uh, things have been a little quiet around here for the last month, but hopefully I'll be back with some new content sometime soon. So I guess I will uh, see you guys next time and that'll do it for me this time. All right. Thanks guys.